Okay, brand new smartwatch from Huawei. This is the Huawei Watch GT3 series. Now my review unit has arrived a little bit later than expected, but nevertheless, here I am with my video showing you exactly what this watch can do with some added brutal honesty to the mix. So this is the stainless steel version, priced £299, but you can also pick up the much cheaper active model for only £229. Um, in the box, you have a wireless charger, quick start guide, and you have some extra clips so you can adjust the strap size. So straight away, I want to tell you guys that this smartwatch is not running Wear OS or Android. So you can totally forget about Strava, Spotify, YouTube, Google Maps, etc. This watch is instead running Harmony OS version 2.1.0. And this is actually a lighter version of Harmony OS than what we saw in the original Huawei Watch 3 Pro. There is no built-in Wi-Fi and you won't be able to reply to notifications or text messages. Saying that, we do have some very good health improvements that I will talk about a bit later. This watch is not on the advanced level of technology that you get with the Apple Watch or even the Galaxy Watch 4 Classic. And the Classic is actually priced around £369. Now the features on the Galaxy Watch 4 Classic completely dominates what this Watch GT3 can do. For example, the Galaxy Watch 4 has everything that this watch has to offer, but you also get ECG, blood pressure monitoring, BMI, built-in Wi-Fi, downloadable apps, full app store, thousands of downloadable watch faces. You can answer WhatsApp phone calls. You can reply to all notifications, messages, and emails directly on the watch. All right, so move these aside. Coming back to the Huawei Watch GT3. Now, with all that I just mentioned, it does not make this watch crap. This is a very good premium fitness tracking watch. So 46 millimeters in diameter, Watch case is stainless steel. The entire strap is also stainless steel. You got the Huawei marking on the buckle and it's very easy to change the strap sizes and to remove um, those extra links. The straps do also have a quick release. So you press the button and you can carefully remove the watch strap. So very nice looking stainless steel finish on the sides and the wrist strap. Now you do have time markings going all the way around with a very tiny bezel in between so nice, beautiful, large 1.43 inch AMOLED display with a screen res of 466 by 466. And I believe there is no Gorilla Glass protection on the front. Now on the back of the watch, you've got your health sensors um, and you've got a smooth ceramic finish. And I do want to quickly compare the health sensors. So this is the Huawei Watch 3 Pro and this is the GT3. And the heart rate sensor in the GT3 model has been upgraded from a four sensor to an eight sensor. Now, not just that, the GPS and other health tracking features have also been upgraded and we're going to be testing some of them out to see exactly how good they are. So no doubt, super premium build quality. Absolutely love how this watch looks. I want to do a few side by sides. So there is the Watch 3 Pro titanium build quality against stainless steel. Uh, but beauty wise, they both look uh, really nice. But of course, the titanium looks better, but it depends on your own personal taste. So just bringing in the GW4 Classic. So both watches do have stainless steel watch cases. And here is a quick comparison wearing both on my wrist. So Huawei Watch GT3 versus Galaxy Watch 4 Classic. It is definitely down to your own personal taste. But right now, if I had to tell you guys which one I think looks better design wise, then I'm going for the Watch GT3. That is a beautiful looking watch. Now let's quickly talk about the power and performance. I believe this is not running the Kirin A1 nor does it have the high silicon 6262 but on the official Huawei website it shows under specs ARM Cortex M which could be a completely new chip also this watch has only 32 megabytes of RAM and I'm going to say that again there's no mistake here I said megabytes 32 megabytes of RAM so that should already tell you what sort of performance you can expect 
from this watch. And you also have four gigs of internal storage. So the internal storage is gonna be for downloadable watch face, which I'm coming to. And that's what notification looks like. So Sky News notification, it's read only, and you can just close it. So yeah, no music storage available, at least on iOS. So I am paired up to my iPhone 13 Pro. I absolutely struggled for over an hour trying to pair up to the Pixel 4 and the Galaxy Fold 3. I tried pairing up on two different Android phones. It just refused to pair up uh, with the smartphone apps. And I also downloaded the latest versions of Huawei Health on both phones directly from the app gallery. Um, and still, I could not connect this watch to these Android phones. So I only tested it on two Android phones and it wouldn't work, but it paired up straight away first time with the iPhone. But unfortunately, it came with a whole host of problems. So the first problem I encountered, so have a good look at this watch face because it's about to stop working. So if you tap on watch faces within the smartphone app, you will have a whole bunch of watch faces that you can immediately download. They're probably free because this is iPhone. On Android, they might be a mix of free and paid. Tap on mine. These are all the watch faces that are already on the watch. So let's just install one. I just want to show you. So tap on this one. It's called Gritty. Sporty looking watch face. Now let me show you what happens. Okay, it's downloading and now it's installing. So you can see how long this takes. And this is what I'm talking about when I said 32 megabyte RAM performance. A watch face, which is only 1.3 megabytes in size, is taking this long to transfer. Um, the equivalent on the Apple Watch or even the Galaxy Watch, which I haven't taken off, is still on my wrist. Um, it takes seconds, maybe three or four seconds, 10 seconds if it's a big watch face and it's installed. Now, all this talking we're doing, we've only reached 49%. It's still installing that one single watch face of 1.3 megabytes in size. So you are not buying a powerful watch with a powerful performance. That is something I need to tell you guys straight away because nobody else will. Installing, done. So you can see that the watch face has not changed, even though it's downloaded and it said done. I'm gonna hit install again. And now look at this. Watch face is totally gone black. There is no watch face now. You have a watch without a watch face. It's a permanent black screen. You can swipe, all your tiles are there. All your features are there. You can even, you can even have a look at your app drawer. All of that's there. But every time you're supposed to see a watch face instead, you're gonna see a black screen. So this is the problem right now with iOS. So yeah, I've received the watch quite late, but I've already discovered many issues with it. So I'm not sure what sort of better testing Huawei goes under. So if I even go back to the default one, the one we had before, it's called dark blue. That's a nice watch face, by the way. We're just gonna hit update. It says it's installing. It shouldn't take that long if the watch faces are built in. So that doesn't really make sense, but it's taking the full time to install a watch face that is supposedly already installed on the watch. Also, the size of this watch face is 0 0.97 megabytes. Okay, done. Have a look, no watch face there. Set as default, still no watch face there. Black screen. Technically the watch face is there, we just can't see it. You should be able to keep it pressed there so you can see what happens. This is another way you can get your watch face back. So I'm just showing you the problems I encountered and the ways which I fixed my own problems. So there's Cyberpunk right there, really nice watch face. And we're back in action again. But there's a glitch there, maybe a firmware update will fix it. Now, speaking of firmware updates, there is a firmware update available and it's 256 megabytes in size, but I can't update because every time I update, it fails on me. It will get to 17% and it will fail. So it happens every single time. And I think it's got something to do with me trying to update whilst on iOS. So I guess if I want to do the firmware update successfully, I need to connect it to a Huawei watch. Here's the Huawei P40 Pro Plus. So we're going to try it and keep moving forward here. There is no built-in Wi-Fi, but we have Bluetooth 5.2. You you cannot make any NFC payments, which is quite normal for Huawei smartwatches, but you do have an upgraded GPS. So it's running Harmony OS. It's fairly smooth in operation. I don't feel any lag whilst navigating the menus. It's only when you try and download a watch face, that's when you realize um, how underpowered the watch is. So this watch does have Celia voice assistant. But unfortunately, you get this message every time you try and use it. It requires a Huawei phone running EMUI 10.1 or later. So the Celia voice assistant is not gonna work when connected to an iPhone. Apparently this does support Bluetooth phone calls. There is a built-in speaker and a microphone. 
So we're going to briefly test that out. Okay, so you can see we received a phone call. I am going to answer the call. Nice, easy way to adjust the volume there. Uh, yeah, so you can hear my echoes. So as you guys just saw, Bluetooth phone calls works absolutely fine on the watch. So quickly show you some of the features. You can change your watch face by keeping the center pressed. You will feel some haptic feedback and then you'll be able to switch. Now, most of these watch faces are standard and you cannot edit the complications. One or two you can. So for example, black tie can change the secondary time. There's another one called classy gold. If you hit the settings button, again, you can change the secondary time zone. You can't really change any of the advanced complications. Now, if you hit more, you will see two more watch faces that you can install straight away. So we're going to go to the one that's called versatile. And that's what it looks like. So beautiful screen, nice looking watch faces. If you swipe down from the top, you've got some quick toggles and your connection and battery information at the bottom. If you swipe towards your right, you've got your local weather and your Celia. So you can see the Celia round circle spinning around. Now, if you swipe towards the left, you've got some health tiles. So that's your heart rate sensor. And that is all day continuous heart rate sensing. This can also test your blood oxygen and you can enable automatic SpO2. If you swipe again, you've got some health rings. Then you have local weather and that is it. Now, if we swipe up from the bottom, you've got your notifications. Now, all the notifications you see here are read only. So you cannot reply to any notification, no text message, no WhatsApp message, no social media message. You can't do anything with them. You can only read them. And all you get to read is the subject. If you tap the button at the top and you can see there are two buttons on the side. The top one is a scrollable button. So you can tap it and you can use it to scroll like I was doing in notifications. And if you press that button, it will give you all your apps. So here are all the apps available on this watch. Um, you cannot download any more. And under settings, you do have the option to customize the down button. So at the moment, when you press the down button, it will open workouts, but you can have it open any app you like. So down button is customizable. Now, always on display is available. You will find it under watch face and home. So you can switch it on. It will give you the warning that the battery life will be reduced. And then you can choose your AOD style. A matching style will be used when the screen turns off. If there isn't one, you can set it to any one of the defaults. And here you can choose which one is going to be your default. I'm going to go for this one here. OK, so quickly show you what the always on display looks like. So when that times out, there's your always on display. All right, we're going through all the apps very quickly. So the first one is find my phone. So you tap it, your phone will start ringing, as you can hear. All right, then you have a torch. So we just give you an ultra bright white screen. You've got settings and then you have stopwatch, sleep monitoring, health rings. Over here is your stress management. You've got your phone. When you tap it, it'll give you a call log of who has called you, but there is no dialer. So I can't dial a phone number, but if someone has already called me, I can just tap and it will immediately start ringing them. OK, so we're just going to cancel that call. So you have a phone option, but you don't have a dialer. OK, then we have local weather, blood oxygen monitoring, your workouts, calendar, breathing exercises. And then over here we have timers, temperature monitoring. So there is a temperature sensor built in and I do want to very quickly measure my temperature. 34. Perfect. Over here you have a shortcut to running. You've got your heart rate sensor and then you've got contacts. You can have a list of your favorite contacts added via the health app. Over here, we have alarm clock. You've got an app for air pressure. Music app. I will run, I will climb, I will soar. Oh, the speaker quality is really nice. So there is a song on there. We've got four gigs of internal storage, but being paired up to my iPhone, I don't see any option to be able to transfer music to the watch. So that's a shame because the music quality actually sounded good. And you do also have Bluetooth, so you can pair up um, some Bluetooth earbuds and enjoy music on the go. Now we've got a compass and I do want to quickly show you that. And we have to collaborate it in the usual fashion. And there we go. Nice looking compass there. And finally, you have your notifications. So that is pretty much all the apps. So I guess that means we're going to have to test out those sensors. So here is the O2 ring. It's a medical grade oximeter. It can test my heart rate and SpO2 at the same time and give me accurate readings. So we're going to compare our results and see how close to medical grade standards the Watch GT3 actually is. So I've got the watch on nice and tight. Open up the heart rate sensor. 
is currently giving us 95 beats per minute. So 75 beats per minute on the O2 ring. 72, go back to the watch. 83 and 81. 82, 83. That's 82 and 81. So quite close now, after about a minute. 82 and 82. We're on par with each other now. 81. So it looks like quite an accurate heart rate sensor. But I am pleased to say that you will get quite close to medical grade standards for heart rate reading. So now we are going to measure the SpO2. So I've got to stay still. The ring is showing us 96% right now. Right, it didn't even get halfway and then it just skipped to the end. 94% and the O2 ring is saying 96%. So definitely not satisfied with the blood oxygen. We're going to measure that again just to be on the safe side. So it says keep still with the watch facing upwards. You can see the progress bar going around that circle. Shows you your current heart rate as well. 92%. That is well off. No way is that accurate. 97%. You don't get that problem with these two watches. They give you accurate SpO2 and heart rate reading every single time. So that is the real difference maker there. This is a premium fitness tracking watch. But for this price point, you do expect an accurate SpO2 reading. So apparently upgraded heart rate sensors, I would have thought they would have worked on the SpO2. Um, yeah, unfortunately not. So that was my experience with iPhone, but I did also connect with my Huawei P40 Pro Plus. The firmware update completed immediately with no issues when I connected to the Huawei P40 Pro Plus. Um, after connecting to the same ecosystem, this watch now has full functionality. So there are more features to talk about when connecting to a Huawei phone. So straight away, I wanna show you music. So you can now manage music on your watch. So you can see there's one song there, you can add new songs and playlists directly from the smartphone. So you can now control your music and you couldn't do this on iOS. Quickly show you health monitoring, all of that is the same. So true sleep, continuous heart rate, continuous automatic stress test, automatic SpO2 and automatic skin temperature measurement. All of that is the same, you've got that on iOS as well. Another exclusive feature to Huawei is App Gallery. So yes, you do have third party app support, Unfortunately, I have not heard of any of these apps. They are very basic apps. Um, only app I've heard of here is Petal Maps. So nothing mainstream here. These are very basic apps that you're probably never gonna use. I would like to see more mainstream apps included. That will make things a bit more useful. So two features that definitely were not available on iOS was music control and app gallery for the third party app control. Everything else was there. And one of the things that didn't work was the watch faces. So have a look at recommended. You can see that you've got lots of paid watch faces here. There are free watch faces available, like here it says for free, hit more, and now you can see all the free watch faces. So Huawei will give you both free and paid, whereas iOS only gave you the option for free. If we go to my section, so these are all my watch faces, I do want to change my watch face to see what happens. So let's go back to the default watch face and see if we get the horrible black screen of death. So it's installing. Set as default and it's changed straight away. So that is what should have happened with iPhone, but it didn't. Let's try another one. And this one is called Classy Gold. Hit update and it's downloading. And then you hit set as default and it's done. Much quicker to change watch faces and it actually works. And another feature that did not work was Celia. So let's keep the bottom button pressed. What is the weather like today in London? So she is talking, but her volume seems to be really low. Okay, I don't have a specific volume for Celia, but but the ringtone volume was literally off. I've turned that loud. Okay, so let's see what happens with Celia now. Tell me a joke. Sorry, I didn't understand that. So the voice is quite low. It hasn't got a sense of humor. Um, how far am I away from London? Sorry, I didn't understand. Right, it doesn't seem to understand much. 
How far is my nearest gas station? Sorry. What's playing in cinema? Set a timer for 10 minutes. What? Sorry. Every single smartwatch is able to do that. Okay, now this is a really important one. If you can't do this, set alarm for 6 p.m. Alarm created. So not so useful Celia works fine when connected to a Huawei phone. So those were my experiences with the Huawei Watch GT3. And of course we tested both iOS and Huawei's Harmony OS. Let's check out the pros and cons. So there you have it guys. You will see my pros and cons on the screen. It's the same story with Huawei. They make the most beautiful looking watches. They look great, they feel great, but the software is just really lacking. Now just imagine this watch powered by Wear OS by Google. That's like a dream which will never come true, unfortunately for us smartwatch fans. So the takeaway here is Huawei Watch GT3 is overpriced. It lacks power, lacks health features which you would expect at the price point that this is currently selling for. The previous Huawei Watch GT2 is still a better buy than this one because you are not getting that much of an upgrade with the GT3. It does not feel like a huge upgrade. So if you already have the GT2, you're probably gonna be very disappointed if you upgraded to the GT3. So yeah, I do have that thought in my mind that this could have been so much better than it actually is. There are so many issues with this watch it does not feel like it's ready to be released. I can't help thinking, what about the consumer? What if they don't have a Huawei phone? What if they've got an iPhone? What if they've got a Google Pixel 5 or a Samsung S21? What are they going to do? So the question is, should you buy the GT3 if you've got an iPhone? And the answer is a very obvious, hell no. Don't buy it if you've got an iPhone. At least for now, don't buy it. Maybe a firmware update will change things. And if I have more things to share with you, I will share them with you in the comments of this video down below. Now, any questions, do let me know in the comments. Meanwhile, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.